Hello. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to place an implant directly through the soft tissue. This is the OCO implant system. I really like it because it has shoulders on the drills. Now, a lot of people like to reflect a flap if you have an edentulous area and place the implant with the flap reflected. I prefer to go through the soft tissue because if you go through the soft tissue and place the implant, when you place the healing abutment on the implant, the emergence profile of the soft tissue forms around the healing abutment while the implant is osseointegrating for three months. So first, painless and profound local anesthesia, so important. So this is a tooth that's been extracted and now the socket has healed for at least six months. And when I extracted the tooth, I grafted it with platelet-rich fibrin and freeze-dried bone. I'm wiping the edentulous area with Periagard on a cotton ball. Decide which of these teeth adjacent to it I want to use as a guide for the angulation of the implant. Now you can see the molar tooth implant is angled forward a little bit. So I've got to judge the ideal angulation between the two teeth. I'm going to primarily use the bicuspid as a guide for the angulation. One of the keys of placing a mandibular implant is don't go too deep. You know, you don't want to go, of course you don't want to damage the inferior alveolar nerve, but you also don't want to drill past the undercut on the apical part of the mandible on the lingual side. So I'm taking a periapical radiograph and I've got approximately 10 millimeters from the alveolar crest to the coronal part of the inferior alveolar nerve on the periapical radiograph. So with this method, what we do is I start with just a thin pilot drill. And I'm gonna go short of the known distance between the alveolar crest and the coronal part of the inferior alveolar nerve, just to not take any chances on drilling into the nerve. Remember, a periapical radiograph is one to one. It should be the exact distance from the alveolar crest to the coronal part of the inferior alveolar nerve, but I'm gonna give it a little space just to be sure. Now, this is the OCO system. The thing I like about it, the drills, is they've got a shoulder on the drill. I don't use a system that doesn't have a shoulder on the drills. The bottom line is you don't have to worry about drilling into the inferior alveolar nerve. That's the real worry when you're placing implants. So you don't want to do that. And the shoulder keeps you from doing that. You don't have to think about the depth once you establish your depth with the pilot drill. Okay, so this again is the drill. Here's the shoulder. And these are sleeves that go on that drill. And they, when you look at a number on the, the sleeve part, this number is the, the length of the drill once you put the sleeve on that drill. See, these are the sleeves that go onto the drill. This is a sleeve and it just attaches onto the drill. Now these are the length and widths of the implants. So if you use a 3.25 millimeter width implant, you're going to use a three millimeter width drill. Okay, so the concept is the width of the drill is a little bit smaller than the width of the implant. It's just like screwing in a wood screw. So each of these drill sizes corresponds to a implant size that's a little bit wider. You'll notice these are the upper, the maxillary drill sizes going from 2.8, 3.5, 4.5. These are the mandibular drills, 3.0, 3.7, and 4.7. So here's the shoulder on the drill, and we're gonna put a sleeve on this part of the drill to limit the length. So there's the drill. Hello, this video is a small portion of a complete comprehensive video. If you'd like to see this complete comprehensive case and many other complete comprehensive cases, click on the link 
in the description below. Here are the sleeves. It's an ingenious system because the sleeve is going to just fit directly onto the drill and you can vary the length of the part that's actually in the soft of the drill that's in the soft tissue or the bone. So these are the different implants we're using. 3.25, 4.0, 5.0, and 6.0. So with each of these implant sizes, the drill is going to be a little bit smaller in diameter than the implant. Okay, so in this case, remember we, we felt like we had uh, 12 millimeters, so I'm going to drill my pilot hole through the tissue staying parallel to the bicuspid tooth, mesial to the implant to be placed. And so this is the PA of the pilot drill in the osteotomy. Now, you know you've got, so you've got two millimeters of soft tissue and from alveolar crest to tip a drill, of, to tip a pilot drill, in this case is about 10 millimeters. So you'd want a 12 millimeter drill, 10 millimeters in the bone and two millimeters in the soft tissue. You can see the red stop right here. So what are you wanting to not do? Well, here's the inferior alveolar nerve down here. There's the mental foramen right there. So since I've got implants on these two teeth, I don't want to drill past the tip, of, past the apical part of those implants. And also look at my, the angulation of my pilot drill. And this is just a plain, thin pilot drill. And when I place my wider pilot drill, I'll change that angulation just a little bit is going to be right. So since we're using 12 millimeters, now that means two millimeters of soft tissue and 10 millimeters in the bone. And this shoulder is going to contact the soft tissue. So two millimeters of this pilot drill will be in the soft tissue and 10 millimeters of the pilot drill will be in the bone. You can see the shoulder right here that's going to stop it at the tissue. Now the key to this is I've determined my length with my pilot drill with the endo stops on the pilot drill, the thin drill. If the bone is soft enough, you can start with uh, the pilot drill with the shoulder on it. That's not a problem, but I usually start with just a plain pilot drill. Now, when you're placing the implant, you always want at least a millimeter of bone surrounding the implant. But you want to, you don't want to be too, you, of course you don't want to be too deep, but you also don't want to be too far to the lingual because you don't want to get into the concavity on the lingual part of the mandible. See, so this is just perfect. I'm just slightly facial, but I've got plenty of bone on the facial. So that's perfect. My alignment is just right. So now we're going to be thinking about which implant are we going to place. I want as wide an implant as I can get without encroaching on the, t the implants on either side of the one I'm placing because it's about surface area. You either want a longer implant if it's thinner or a wider implant if it's shorter. So in this case we're going to go we're going to be heading for a 5.0, so I know my drill width is going to be a 4.7. A 5.0 implant and a 4.7 drill width. The drill width is a little bit thinner than the implant. And I'm going to use a 12 millimeter sleeve because I want the sleeve shoulder to stop on the soft tissue. So again, I'm going to have 2 millimeters of the drill See, and this sleeve fits all the way up to the yellow line on the drill. So this is going to be 12 millimeters. Two of that depth is, in soft, is through the soft tissue and 10 millimeters is in the bone. So that's 12 millimeters. Keep my angulation the same. Make sure I'm aligned. Then I'm going to go to the 3.7. Then we're going to go all the way to the 4.7. So with each of these drills, I'm going to put a sleeve on the drill that creates a 12 millimeter drill that's going into, this is the 12 millimeter sleeve that's going to fit on the, on the drill. And so now this is 12 millimeters from the sleeve, the 
the shoulder to the tip of the drill and they fit on very easily. See, that's 12 millimeters. Keep the same angulation. See, I've got lot, plenty of width, plenty of space between the molar and the bicuspid. So I want to use all the surface area. The only thing that you're being careful of, you don't want to place the, the implant too far to the facial or the lingual because you want a millimeter of bone, at least a millimeter of bone surrounding the implant. Now we're going to go to the 4.7 because remember we want to place a 5.0 diameter implant. The sleeves are set by color. So this is the, the red, the blue, and the green. The 4.7 is the green one. So you just go to the green 12. That's going to slide onto the, the 4.7 drill. Very easy. Okay, so this is 12 millimeters from the shoulder to the tip of the drill. Two millimeters of the drill in the soft tissue, 10 millimeters in the bone. You want to be sure you've got at least a millimeter of bone on the facial and the lingual. That would limit the width of the implant drill. If you were running out of bone on the facial, then you would have stopped with the drill before the 4.7. All right, so this is a 4.7, that's a good angulation. Plenty of space between the mental foramen and the, and the inferior alveolar nerve and the tip of the implant. So we ended up with a 4.7 millimeter in diameter drill and a 12 millimeter drill. Now remember, that's not 12 millimeters in the bone, that's two millimeters in the soft tissue and 10 millimeters in the bone. So here's the implant. You want all the threads of the implant in the bone. The collar, that you don't need that into the bone. That goes through the soft tissue, but you want all the threads of the implant into the bone. And the collar is going to be in the soft tissue. Now, if it's in the aesthetic zone, you want to torque it to 35 newton centimeters. If it's in the aesthetic zone, you want to have the coronal part of the implant in under the for sure under the t under the soft tissue because you want to hide any of the metal if you're using a titanium implant so you'll place it a little bit deeper see here's the here are the threads right here the healing abutment will go through the soft tissue and form the emergence profile while the implant is osseo integrating for three months and that's a good direction right there as far as the alignment of the implant this implant is a little tip forward so the spacing is a little tricky but that's a good alignment. So now I'm placing the healing abutment and the emergence profile will form around that healing abutment over the three months that the implant is osseo integrating. So that was the final of the implant placement. Now the implant is osseo integrated for three months and the emergence profile has developed for three months. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Are you feeling stuck? You know you have more to offer and you can elevate higher in your dentistry practice, but you just don't know how to do it. Well, great news. DentistryMasterclasses.com is here for you. At DentistryMasterclasses.com, Dr. Kerpeth is offering his greatest work and his best cases. Here's everything included when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. You will get incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and the Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference. You will get before and after pictures of Dr. Kepper's fantastic restored cases. And guess what? All of this is 40 bucks a month. That's right, 40 bucks a month. This is an opportunity you cannot miss. Go to DentistryMasterclasses.com and subscribe today.